Who gives a crap what anybody else thinks? If anyone's looking at you, go, <laughs> he's only doing a small deadlift. What a loser. That person has no problems. He has decided to spend his time laughing at somebody else for lifting. What well, is Okay, it's a lightweight, but it's still lifting weights. It's still good. You're at the gym. Simon Miller, the bald asshole here because I'm bald and also an asshole. Genuine merchandise on the way soon. The hell is wrong with me? My parents would be ashamed. Um, so shout out to everyone for joining me. I appreciate it. But also shout out to the lovely commenter who said to me, Simon, I was going through your seven best insert exercise here videos and you did chest and you did shoulders and you did biceps and then I couldn't find any more. Why did they just stop? And I was like, that's a good point. That would annoy me too. If I was trying to, you know, get information of someone, I was making a plan and then it just vanished. But like, it's a ghost. It's like Casper the flipping ghost. Come with me if you want to live. So I thought, okay, we'll smash it out. Like I said, we're doing back right now. You've got that from the title. And as soon as I can, we'll do legs. And as soon as I can, we'll do triceps. And then you'll have them all. And you can take it on board and try and use them. Or you can say, Simon, you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm going to come around your house. I'm going to murder you. And be like, that is way over the top, man. Just don't watch the video. But hey, sometimes people in comments say that. I had one yesterday going, blah, blah, blah. and it's just like the possession was coming out of his mouth. Anyway, yes, here are seven best exercises for back. That was, that was gibberish grammar. I want to point out as well, this isn't, number seven isn't the worst, the number one isn't the best. Uh, these are just seven that I think you should incorporate into your routine. Although if I do think one's more important, I'll let you know. So I'm going to do that now. Smash the important button. I'll probably put some kind of sound effect in there. Pull-ups. If you watch my other videos, you know how much I love pull-ups. So many people crap on bodyweight exercises because we're all gym bros deep down. And apparently it's not cool to do, uh, to do bodyweight exercises. If you are doing proper wide grip, so lat focus pull-ups, and you make it your genuine goal to try and improve that each and every week, even if you do, so say you do four on your first week, then you do five, then you do six, then you do six and a half, whatever. Maybe sometimes on the last rep, you pull yourself all the way up to the top, and you fight, and you fight, and you fight all the way down. Whatever you have to do to ensure that you get better at pull-ups, I promise you, within around four to six months, your V-shape, whoever wants the V-shape with the big lats, is going to improve drastically. And I'm, I'm over the top, Simon, it's hyperbole. No, it's not. This isn't true, but if somebody said you could only ever have one, uh, you know, one back exercise for the rest of your life, I would probably consider pull-ups. I say consider there because somebody can probably prove me wrong. But I think they're that good for you. They're so easy because you can kind of do them whatever you want. Again, we all got locked down in our houses. And if you were able to get a pull-up bar, you could just hook it over your door or maybe you had one you could just grab. Wide grip, overhand, uh, lap pull-ups are just, they are fantastic. I'd marry one if I could and we'd have a lovely ceremony. And none of my friends would come because like, he's marrying, he's marrying pull-ups. It's not a thing, but they are so good. They're one of my favorite exercises. As you probably realized, please do pull-ups. Number six is the deadlift. Now, there are uh, variations of this, such as the Romanian deadlift, which is awesome for legs. We'll talk about that when we get to legs, a great underestimated exercise. And many people kind of even put normal deadlifts in their leg routine. I don't have a problem with that. I think you should put them whatever the hell you want. I would always incorporate them in, into the back. Because, I mean, really, as soon as you drive, the way you should deadlift is you should drive from your feet, through your calves, through your legs, up into your upper body and your back. They're obviously going to focus more on your lower back, but they certainly will, uh, you know, they'll, they'll basically hit most of your back too, and they hit other stabilizer muscles as well. But, of course... I mean, not only is it a great compound movement, and you should always be uh, incorporating as many compound mu movements as you can, but for me personally, again, it's the coolest lift to try and progressive overload every single week. So, you know, if you start off 100 kilograms and a year or so down the line, you've doubled that and you're up to 200, a 200 kilogram deadlift is pretty cool. I understand the world of competitive lifting, it's nothing. But if you get up to 200 kilograms, we talked about it on the video the other day, was it? If the bar ain't bending, you're just pretending. At 200 kilograms, you're probably going to get a little bit of a bend. Um, and it's just a great lift. And I think it's because it's so basic. Like a squat is great too. But with a squat, you, you have to use a rack. A deadlift is exactly what it says on the tin. It's a deadlift. And you just pick it up. Um, I think you should be doing them. Again, if you've got niggles and injuries, as I always say, do you have to do them? No, of course not. You can isolate your back in many other ways. But as an overall mass builder, deadlifts are up there as one of the best. Again, you could argue it's one of the best lifts ever, full stop, no matter what we're talking about, because it does such a good job. 
Uh, don't go too crazy when you first start doing them. No one's going to care. Even if you start just doing it with one plate on each side. So what that's like 90 pounds or 40 kilograms. Who gives a crap what anybody else thinks? If anyone's looking at you, go, <laughs> he's only doing a small deadlift. What a loser. That person has no problems. He has decided to spend his time laughing at somebody else for lifting. Well, it's, okay, it's a lightweight, but it's still lifting weights. It's still good you're at the gym. But yeah, deadlift should be on any list like this. That's, they're so versatile too. You can kind of, you know, attribute them to different muscle groups, which is why they rock. Hell deadlift. Number five is lat pull downs. Obviously, really, when you think about it, and just in case you don't know what a lat pull down is, you do it on a machine and you have a bar and you're here and, and you pull them down. Again, the reason they came into existence is because it's essentially a weighted pull up. But obviously, instead of going up, you sit down, you lock your legs under a cushion or whatever, a pad, and then you pull the weight down. But it's the same kind of movement. Uh, you can use them together, though. You can do pull-ups, then something else, then do a lap pull-down, too. And the best thing about a pull-down is there's loads of variations, right? We'll talk about one in a minute. But you can do wide. You can do near. You can do reverse. Uh, you can do close. Like You know, there's just so many different things you can do with it. So, again, it's versatile. It's diverse. It's different. And, again... If you sort of pull it right down into your lats and squeeze and then slowly, you know, fight that weight on the way back up, you'll really feel it even after a few reps, even if you're not lifting that heavy. That's how good it is. Uh, I can't imagine a back routine without lat pull downs, if I'm honest. They rock too. Number four is the barbell or dumbbell row. You can, obviously, there's, I don't want to get too bogged down by going number five, barbell row, number four, dumbbell row, number three, single. I'm mean, like, oh man, I'm falling asleep here. But obviously, they're a bit different. If you're going to do a barbell row, you're going to put weights on a barbell. You're going to give it the overhand grip, let's say, and you're going to do that. But of course, you can give it the underhand grip and you can do that. Or you can get a single one and go and put your hand on a bench and you can do that. And you can switch that around too. There'll be hammer strength machines as well. It's just a great exercise. And the row, as you're going to find out in this list, comes up a lot. Because this movement of pulling right into your lats not only lets you squeeze your entire back so you hit your rhomboids and you hit all kinds of stuff, um, it's again once you start progressive overloading on it, especially when you're doing bar when you're doing barbell rows and you can get to a point where you're lifting a lot of weight, you will see such good uh, progress with your back. You, it, it, it's, it's incredible. It's almost like a I don't even think of the word, but it just it's like magic. It's like magic. All of a sudden, oh my gosh, I'm great, and it feels good too. I know that sounds ridiculous, but you, blood rushes right to sort of the your, your, your latimus dorsi, so you kind of have that wide lat syndrome when you're walking around the gym, and other people are looking at you thinking you're a moron, but you don't care. Cause you're like, oh my back, I'm so big. So <laughs> barbell and dumbbell rows, yeah. And if you'd rather do them on a machine or an isolation machine or okay, a hammer strength, that's cool. There's no rules here. Just do the movement. Never forget that it's all about the movement. And how you decide to do that movement is completely up to you. Number three is one that I think you could probably take or leave, but I personally enjoy it. But you need to have the right equipment in your gym. And I always think that's a bit of a kerfuffle. But it's the T-bar row. Again, we're in, we're in row county now, row park. And a T-bar row is essentially, is the same as a dumbbell row, but you're doing it on a machine. So all the bits are in place for you. I guess it kind of makes it a little bit easier because it's easier to take the weight on and take the weight off because usually the plates just go on the front of the of the machine or whatever you've got set up. But I do like them a lot, especially close grip ones. I feel like when I, again, when I'm squeezing on a T-bar row, I, I just feel like I'm getting, it just it feels like I'm working something, right? And to me, mentally, that's massively important. Some people will set up a normal barbell like in the corner of the gym and do it that way. You absolutely can. It can be quite tricky because the bar will just go nuts. I'd say it's one that if you are looking for something different to do, or you're looking a way to change up your routine, absolutely add it in. But if you never want to do it from the moment you're born to the moment you die, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I don't, it's not, an, it's not a necessity. It's not oxygen, right? Oxygen is essential. T-bar row is not. Number two is the wide grip cable row. Something I only recently incorporate, I say recently, the last few years into my routine. You see a lot of um, famous dudes doing it. You know, if you ever go on bodybuilding.com or men's health and you go through their routines, you often see you often see this one and I get it because it's quite easy to do as well. I don't mean easy in terms of intensity, but there's always a way to do it in a gym. And you're basically, you have some form of row machine in your gym, I guess, that has a, a pulley system, a cable system where you can change uh, you can change the handles. And yeah, if you get a wide bar, you can do it with a close bar as well. I prefer a wide one. But if you get with a wide bar, so you're set up like this and you can just pull it in. Again, 
again, you're just doing the barbell row movement, really, but you're doing it on a cable pulley system. And some people just prefer that. They prefer the way the resistance feels. And like I say, I added it in towards the end of my workouts a few years ago, and I kind of agreed. I love barbell rows, but I got such a good squeeze doing it off the cable ones. And it's really good, like I say at the end, because if you are using it on a, on a weight stack, being able to drop down that weight as quickly as you can just by moving the needle or the pin is absolutely fantastic. So yeah, if you're not doing that and your gyms are slowly open again or they're about to open, throw it in. I think you'll find success. And number one is going back to the pull downs is the close grip pull down. And if you can, and you're going to have to buy it, and they cost a lot of money, but my word, when places have them, American gyms have them more than UK gyms, use a mag grip. I'll try and remember to put a picture up here, but I always forget. But mag grips are so good for pull downs. Uh, the one I like to use, you kind of hold it like that. So it's quite close, obviously close grip pull up. Not only does it give you better um, grip, obviously the clue is in the name, but I just think it gives you a better range of motion too. It's just, oh man, it's absolutely fabulous. It was suggested to me by my trainer when I was training for a bodybuilding competition three years ago. He sent me my plan through. It said, use a mag grip. And I was like, Mag, what are you talking about? And he showed me it, and I wasn't able to get one at the time. But when I have gone over to America and I finally found them, I was like, ah, oh, top, 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 top stuff. Again, a great exercise to do if you're more of an advanced lifter and you're trying to find ways to kind of shake things up. This one is so good, I'd eat it with sprinkles. And we always throw one rubbish one out there as well. And as I say, if you want to do this, that's great. It's not a rubbish exercise. You just have to be so careful with it. And I would never, ever go heavy on it. And it's a good morning. And a good morning is basically where you put the bar on your back or whatever you're using, and then you bend forward from the waist. So you're essentially like one of those weird uh, duck things people have that um, put their nose into water. It's drinking the water! So you go like that. They're more going to focus on your glutes and your hamstrings. But people say they do aim for your... Well, of course they do. It also works your lower back as well. I would just do hyperextensions. In fact, hyperextensions probably should have been in that list, but we'll throw it in now. Honorable mention. And again, it's the same kind of movement, right? If you have a hyperextension machine, you're basically hanging over in a pad and then, you know, pulling your back up like a reverse sit-up. And if you're doing it with a good morning, you just happen to be creating your own weight on your back and you're going like that. But I think if you slip or if you're not concentrating enough, it's so easy to slip a disc or ruin your back and you don't want to ruin your back. Put your hand up if you put your back out. It's the worst pain. It's miserable. You can't do anything for weeks. You're grouchy. You're living in a dustbin. You lose your house, and then you're out on the streets. And is that what you want just from doing a good morning, a back exercise? No, it is not. So there it is. Seven exercises that I think kick ass for back. Use them as much as you want. Disuse them as much as you want. I'm just a guy chatting on the internet. Thank you so much for all the support. I love you all. Like the video, share the video, smash the subscribe button, smash the bell button, ding ding, so you know what's going on. I got a Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Simon316. I'm on Instagram and Twitter. All this information is in the link below, and I'll see you soon. Bad, bad ending.